I'm with Wasim Daidni from the Nazareth Trust. Now, Wasim, what is the Nazareth Trust? The Nazareth Trust actually is a Christian charity established in Scotland and operating in Nazareth, the hometown of Jesus. Today, our operations include the Nazareth Hospital, which is a district general hospital, the oldest in, in Israel, the Nazareth Academic School of Nursing, the Nazareth Village, which is a biblical tourism site, and the Serve Nazareth program, which is an international volunteering program. The Trust today employs approximately 800 employees, being one of the main employers in the Nazareth region. And when were you started and why were you started? The Nazareth Trust was founded back in 1861, and its main mission was to follow the commandments of Jesus Christ to heal the sick, relieve the sufferings, and spread the word. And while we, after 160 and something years, we are still doing our main mission, we have expanded our work to generate social impact. We aim to empower our local community, to provide them with equal opportunities, support them in fulfilling their potential, and assist in closing existing gaps. We do that to the local community, regardless, of course, of their variety of backgrounds in, in the area. You have a very long history in the land. You must have been started during the Turkish Ottoman Empire, were you? Indeed. As, as I previously said, the Nazareth Hospital is the oldest in Israel, established back in 1861. Our academic school of nursing is the second oldest, established in 1924, only one year after Hadassah School of Nursing in Jerusalem was opened. So we are celebrating the school's centenary this year. During the years that the Trust has suffered lots of wars, including two world wars and times of crises. As you said, it started, the mission started at the times of the Ottoman Empire, followed by the British Mandate and currently the State of Israel. I can tell you that for a, a couple of months, the hospital director actually during the British Mandate period was the, the Mandate Minister of Health for all of Palestine. We believe that we overcame all of the above crises by our prayers and God's faithfulness. You say you've been doing 100 years of nurses teaching. Are you going to be doing anything special this year? Yes, we planned a lot of, a lot of um, events and celebrations. Regretfully, due to the current circumstances, we can't, so, so we cancel that. But what we, we are still, uh, we are still uh, developing and flourishing, even after 100 years. Actually, this year, we had uh, almost doubled our capacity with adding two new floors, fully equipped with smart rooms and simulation centers. And we have renewed most of our equipment in the existing facility. Furthermore, we introduced a new BA program in partnership with UNO College, and we have launched a special program for applicants who don't meet the minimum bar to join the academy. For those who have suffered from lack of resources or support from their families or environment, we provide a, a special program that grants them the opportunity to change their lives, to join academy, to work, and to earn decent income. We are really proud of this program as it meets three main mottos that we believe in. The first one is granting everyone equal opportunities. The second one is closing gaps. And the third one is realizing personal potential. So I think that it's a, it's a really blessing to have such impact on our centenary celebrations. Tell us about Nazareth Hospital. What are you doing today? The Nazareth Hospital is a, is a general district hospital. It is the main trauma and acute services in Nazareth. We work usually according to a strategic plan that we prepare from time to time. Nowadays, we are working on the next one for the years 25 till 2030. As the former one for the years 2020 to 2025 was fully achieved, and we're very happy and proud of that. The strategic plans usually that we prepare we prepare to meet the immediate needs of the local community. So on, on this basis, actually, we started with uh, filling the existing gaps in acute and life-saving services. So we opened a stroke unit, a heart catheterization unit, trauma emergency department, a urology unit, a respiratory a intensive care unit, and added also a fortified facilities, which the area lacks. We also opened services which require high cultural competence, 
like the uh, psychiatric and psychological uh, departments, as well as the IVF unit. Through these processes of development, we also increased dramatically our residency programs. And today we have 13 accredited departments for residency programs, six of which are accredited for the full term. We increased the number of our residents from 25 to more than 90. We also have special programs to train doctors from the Palestinian Authority, which lacks clinical uh, fields, against a commitment from the doctor to work in rural areas in the Palestinian Authority once his training is over. We also develop unique services that at attract patients to us on a regional and national levels. Such services include the motility unit, the autonomic neurology unit, and the electrophysiology unit. The hospital is very involved and engaged with our community, with hundreds of interactions annually with community centers, with media, with schools. Through them, we try to equip and empower our, our youngsters and teach them to dream. The hospital is accredited by the WHO as a health-promoting hospital. And nowadays, due to the current war, we are investing huge efforts to increase our fortified admission capacity due to the urgent need. We are trying to obtain funds from the Minister of Health and from our local and international friends and donors. So a lot is going on on all aspects. Uh, do you get many doctors and nurses coming as volunteers? Usually we get tens of them each year when it's a, a regular year. Regretfully, due to the COVID previously and the war currently, we had much less volunteers. And at the moment, actually, we have no one. What we are doing at, at this time, we accept them actually through the SERF program. So what we are doing at this time is we, we're trying to utilize the, the war time to invest in improving our programs and our facilities and establish additional partnerships so that we could improve the volunteers' experience with us once we are back again to normal, hopefully soon. So we are trying to be to become more attractive to those because regretfully we believe that you know getting back to normality after war would, would take some time. We also get the volunteers that are non-medical, mainly for the Nazareth village, which we'll, I believe we will talk about later. Upon their visit here or volunteering time, they have a unique experience with our local staff and ministries and grow in faith. Sometimes we have also volunteers that are from the spiritual side and they join our spiritual team and their activities among the staff, the patient and facilities. So the Sir Nazareth program is really a blessing in which we could really reach out to the world actually and introduce Nazareth and local Christian charities and ministries to our international partners. You've already mentioned the School of Nursing. How many nurses are you teaching today? And how many people have been through the program in the past years? Actually, today we have about 400 students on our campus. And we have uh, more than 3,000 uh, graduates from our uh, facility, which has increased with the years. We started with 12 nurses at the beginning, and today we are with, with 400. Our nurses actually fill leading positions in the healthcare sector all around the country. And I have to give credit here to our staff because this was achieved through the dedicated and committed staff that we have because they wrap the students with love and compassion, with personal care and attention. And they accompany them not only throughout the studies challenges, but also when they face personal ones also. I think this is part of the DNA that uh, the Nazareth Trust is really uh, unique about. It's important to note also that most of those students come from a low socioeconomic status, and each one of them is really a success story whose life had been uh, transformed with our help and with the uh, Nazareth Academic School of Nursing. Now, I've been to Nazareth Village before. Tell us about Nazareth Village. The Nazareth Village grants its visitor an outstanding experience. Actually, we take them into a journey in history back 2,000 years to the Nazareth that Jesus knew and lived in. We manifest and explain the parables that Jesus used with replicated first century houses, synagogues, a vineyard, olive press, and the tools that were used then. 
we simplify the understanding of the spiritual meanings of the parables that Jesus used. The village staff is a unique variety of Christians. It includes Christian Arabs and Messianics, locals and internationals who serve together with faith, harmony, and love. On special occasions or seasons like Christmas and Easter, the village holds special programs to the local community related to the season and attracts thousands of visitors. A lot of volunteers serving in the village testify that their lives were transformed with the village experience and their faith really grew significantly. Next year, the village will be celebrating its Silver Jubilee as it has been founded in the year 2000. And we pray and hope that we could start the building of our new visiting center in the village, which would really also add additional important aspects to the experience that uh, that our visitors will get there. It, it's a real blessing to all. And you can really see what it, what it would have been like to crush olives and visit a synagogue and see the carpentry workshop physically with your own eyes, can't you? Absolutely. That's really something that, uh, it, it's like I call it that it's really a, a village. It's mm. nothing that is trying to build a virtual reality. You actually go back 2,000 years ago and see all of the sheep and the donkeys and the carpentry and the vegetables that we grow there, the food that was served then. It's really a unique experience. Tell us a bit about Serve Nazareth. The Serve Nazareth program is an international volunteering program through which we attract volunteers from all around the world. It aims actually to introduce the trust and the local ministries and community to the international Christian community and try to establish partnerships and friendships and strengthen the relationships between the Christian communities worldwide. The SEB program was established in 2006, and since then it provides us with thousands of volunteering years a year. Again, regretfully, in the last year, we have no one due to the war, and we pray for a fast end to the war and for recovery of the SEB and the Nazareth village activities which suffered the most during these turbulent times. The volunteers, as, as I said, are introduced and volunteer in our, in our activities, in the hospital, in the village, in the spiritual team, in the school of nursing. But also we engage them with other Christian uh, ministries in the town. And again, hoping that they will have for the future a special place in their heart for Nazareth and that our relationship with them would be maintained and maybe a partnerships are uh, are created or generated. What are the benefits of getting volunteers from all around the world? It's a, I think it's a, it's a mutual benefit. It's a benefit for the volunteer himself, volunteer himself. It's a benefit for the local community and of course for the trust. Through the program, international connections, partnerships and Christian fellowships are generated and initiated. And of course, assistance to the local ministries is actually provided. Part of the volunteers are an asset to the trust as they actually support our work and enable us to expand it more and more with minimal economical expenses. And on the spiritual side, we enjoy a lot of volunteers that come with long experience in spreading the word of God and supporting those in need. We learn a lot from them for new methods and techniques that help us in our daily ministry. The volunteer himself is empowered and grows in faith. So that's that's the the mutual benefit that everyone enjoys from this program. What's it like serving in a city where Jesus lived and grew up? Oh, that's that's a big one. It's a really great privilege that um, for me as a Christian and a believer at least, that can't be really described in, in, in words. We're trying our best to become better Nazarenes than those who hosted Jesus and rejected him 2,000 years ago. (laughs) We're trying to get really more people to love him, to accept him, to get closer to him, as this we believe that this is the only and one certainty that we have in life against all of the uncertainties that we face on a continuous basis. We want Nazareth to become a city that God is proud of, and that people visiting it enjoy an exceptional experience and would want to maintain and strengthen their connection and relationship with it. We also want the Nazarenes to enjoy quality of life as the city moves toward 
relationships based on the Christian values of love, compassion, respect, and helping others. So there's still way to go, but I think that uh, we're, we're in a better place than Nazareth used to be when Jesus lived in it. So a lot to go, but a lot have been already achieved. What is Nazareth like at Christmas time? Are there big celebrations and what sort of things do you do? We as, as a trust have a lot of, um, as you said, decorations, celebration, special services for the staff with prayers for Thanksgiving, with Christmas carols. We usually host a lot of priests from a lot of other of, of the Christian, all around the Christian traditions. And we do usually a gathering that is multi-traditional ones. We believe that that is a, a real blessing as we see a lot of division or separation uh, between the different Christian, uh, Christian traditions. Uh, we try to be some kind of a bridge between all of them so that we are unified in Christ even if we practice our faith in different levels. Usually we change the, the screensavers of the computers all around the hospitals, putting maternity scenes and scenes that are related to a Christmas with a quotes from the Bible that give people calmness and the comfort. And the same we do in all of the in all of the entrances of the hospital with posters. And actually we prepare a really lovely a nativity scene at the entrance of the hospital. When it, anyone who gets into the into our premises when he gets to the first barrier of the parking, they can see on the side something that is really very lovely, very welcoming and very Christian. So we try to show more the Christian values during these times and to show that Christian values, if all of us follow the Christian values, we would be in a better better world. So we, we spread our values without offensing any of the other faiths that we have here. Didn't you have the scouts marching through Nazareth during Christmas time? Yes, that's uh, we, we have now, like uh, what I spoke about till now, it's about the trust. But in Nazareth, yes, we have a, the parade, the Christmas parade that uh, goes through all of, uh, all of Nazareth. And at the end of it, we have the fireworks. And we have, I think, more than 10 Christmas markets that we have today. Part of it, of course, part of them are commercial, but we have a, a couple of them that they really include significant side, significant activities for the spiritual side also. So we're trying to preserve the, the, the Christian faith and love and spirit and spread the love to all. So you're invited. I hope that the war will end before and we will be able to, to celebrate where last year we couldn't do that because of the war. And it looks like we're, we will be stuck in the same place this year, but we pray that we won't. Why do you do what you do? Oh, Actually, it's simple. It's all about love and faith. It's about love to our God, who taught us that love has no limits. It's love to our brothers and sisters in humanity, regardless of their background. It's love to our own community, towards which we feel real great responsibility. Since I received the, the nomination as the CEO of the Nazareth Trust, the thing that is what the parable that accompanies me all the time is the talents one. You know, I feel that God has given us and under trust a talents that we need to invest in. So it's a great blessing on, on one side, and on the other, it's a really a great responsibility that we need to take care of it and invest it wisely to bear fruit. What is your prayer for the, the trust today? My prayer actually is for the trust and it's for activities is to be safeguarded and guided by God to need to continue its development process and meet the need of our community, of those who are underserved, to be a role model in professionalism, compassion, and love. And I would say also to lead, to continue to lead with humility and inspire others. What's your website for people who'd like to know more about the work that you do? It's nazarethplus.org, as simple as, as it is. N-A-Z-A-R-E-T-H-T-R-U-S-T dot org. Well, Wasim, thank you very much for sharing today. Thank you, Paul, for giving me the opportunity. And of course, I extend my invitation for you to visit us. You have a home in Nazareth. Amen.